Base my logic of the base my exponent. What's my exponent have to be then? 3. And what is it equal? X plus 2. Do I need it in brackets anymore? I'm just going to leave it. So this would be converted to exponential. This would be converted to exponential. We'll do one more and then I'm going to get you guys tried out. So this next one has one piece of information, two pieces of information, three pieces of information. If I have three pieces of information, I can convert to exponential. We agree? The base of my log becomes the base of my exponent. What's the base of my log? Six. If it's the base of an exponent, it needs an exponent. What's its exponent going to be? Two. Two. And then it equals what's left over. What's left over? X. X. Done. If I wanted to just convert, I don't even have to say that X equals 36. I'd just be done. G will do together, and then I'll let you try it. G. What's the problem with G? People will say it has three pieces of information. No. Nope. <laughs> I have to immediately go in and put my log base if it doesn't have one. This one doesn't have a log base. What is its base? Well, I talked to you about this. It's 10. So we put a 10 in. So we have one, two, three, four pieces of information. Am I allowed to convert with four pieces of information? No. No. I have to first do what? Divide that three, Divide that three over. So now I get three equals log base 10 of x. Now I have how much pieces of information? One, two, three. If I have three, can I convert? Yes. The base of my log becomes the base of my exponent. What is the base of my log? 10. Now in order for it to be the base of an exponent, it needs an exponent. What's its exponent? Three. Because, remember, it switches what it's with. And then it equals what's left over. What's the third piece that I haven't used? X. X. Done. Those people who try really hard in this unit can do really well in it. Okay? Okay. H, I, J. Try them out. So, how many pieces of information? One, two, three. We agree? Base of my log becomes the base of my exponent. What's the base? Three. Needs an exponent. What's it going to be? Y. Because it's what's with it doesn't stay, right? Equals 27. Is everyone finding this okay? Yes. Honestly, I have people who can either do it or are lost. There's like no in between. And I hope that we don't have that. I hope we don't have the lost. I hope we have to, everyone gets it. Okay? So here we have one, two, three pieces of information. So, the base of my log is x. It needs an exponent. What's its exponent going to be? P. P and it's going to equal C. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, four pieces of information. What do I have to do first? Divide by four. So we get log base four of 2x minus 1 equals 4. And then we do base my log, which is 4. Needs an exponent, the other 4. And it's going to equal 2x minus 1. And if I just ask you to convert, you're done. I just ask to convert, you're done. No solving, no anything. We're going to get to solving soon. So that's converting from a log to exponential. Is it going to be any like more ridiculous to convert from exponential to a log as long as you remember log, the base becomes a base, and what stays with it doesn't stay with it, right? We swap. So here we're going to convert. Once again, we need three pieces of information before we can convert. So here we have one, two, three. How many pieces of information do we have? Three. And then we have to, can we convert? Yes. Now we have to decide, are we going from an exponential to a log or log to exponential currently? It's an exponential to a log because this one doesn't have the word log in it. That's how you can tell the difference. People get completely thrown off. I'm not even joking. So we need to convert it to a log. So we are going to write log. What is my base going to be? Why? Yeah, yeah, this is the base, the base of my exponent, correct? So it's going to be the base of my log. Yes? 
And in order for a log to be complete, it actually needs something at the same height as it. So do you see how this here is the same height as this? And then I have a little subscript of a 4. Yeah? So what's going to be beside it? 64. Because what's friends and exponentials isn't side by side in a log, right? We, we swap them. And then it's going to equal what's left over. What's left over? The x. Okay, for B, we also check, do we have three pieces of information first? If we have three pieces, we can carry on. If we don't, we have to get three pieces. We get rid of something. So here we have one, two, three. So I can convert. Log base what? Base three. This is my subscript. And then something goes beside my log at the exact same height as the log. 20. And then it's going to equal what's left over. What's left over? X plus B. And then I box it because I'm proud of it because I'm right. Okay, C. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. I have four pieces of information. Now stop yourself from going three times five and making that 15. You cannot do that. They would have had it as a 15 if that was allowed. Right? They didn't. So instead of multiplying those two, what do I actually have to do? Divide by three. So I'm going to get five to the two x minus one equals four. Now I have one, two, three pieces of information. So now can I convert? Yes. So log base what? What can be my base? Five, because it's the base of my exponent, correct? So it's subscripts. And then I need to write something at the same height beside the log. What am I going to put here? Four. Four. Because we swap, right? We don't have what's beside each other. And then it's going to equal what's left over. What's the third thing? 2x minus 2x minus 1. With D, I have... One, two, three, four pieces of information. So what are we going to have to do first? Divide by three. So I get eight equals four to the x minus one. Now I have three pieces of information, so I can convert. Log base what? Four. Log base four. And go up close beside it. Eight. Eight <coughs> equals x minus 1. Your turn. Here's 4 for you to try. 1, 2, 3 pieces of information. So we get log base what? Base 5, because the base of my exponent comes base my log. What goes beside it? 125, and it equals what's left over? 2x. And we box it because we're proud of it. Okay, one, two, three pieces of information. So I can move on. Log base what? X. What goes beside it? 36. 36. And it equals what's left over, which is? 3. It always equals the exponent in the end. Okay, what's the problem with G? Four pieces of information. So I need to divide that 4 over. So I get 9 to the 3x minus 1 equals 6. And then I get log base what? 9 of 6 equals 3x minus 1. And then h, log base d of f equals c. All right. Every time. Always something. Always. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. These ones we have to solve. So no longer do we just convert. We actually have to solve. So we have to get x equals. Correct? So how do we know when we need to convert? 
Well, when this variable is locked in the x or the variables in the base, do you have any way of isolating that x in your knowledge base right now? No. no. So in the genuine knowledge that we've learned with how we solve for x, we don't have anything. So if we, but we do, we just learned something today. If the variable is stuck beside the log here, or if the variable is in the base, the way you solve these is by not actually doing the log Nolan. is by not actually doing a log, it's by converting to exponential. Okay? So, let's convert this first. How do we convert this? Turn into exponential. So the base of my log becomes the base of my exponent. So I'm going to get 6 to the what? 6 to the 4 equals what? x plus 3. Right? And then I'm going to do what? 6 to the power of 4 is what? Uh, 12.96. And it equals x plus 3. We agree? And then we would be done normally if this version, but we're asked to solve. So we're going to subtract 3, and we're going to get x equals 1,293. B, what do we do? Convert we convert to exponential because the variables in the base, the variables in the base of the log or the variables beside the log, I have to convert to exponential. That's the only way I can solve it. So, if I convert this, what's the base of my log? B to the power of 2, two equals 144. So once I convert it, then I can use normal algebra. Right, Margarita? Yes. Yes. Totally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, how do I get that b by itself? Square root. square root. And when I take the square root, what do I always have to remember in front of the square root? Hmm. Plus or? Oh, plus or negative. Positive or negative, yes. So I take the square root, physically with my hand, when I do that, I have to put a plus or minus sign in front of it. Take the square root, get a plus or minus sign in front of it. Now I get b equals plus or minus 12. We need to check if plus or minus 12 works. So, I want to show you guys where there's a button on your calculator. Press math. If you have the old ones, you're going to have to do it in a different way. If you have the new ones, follow me. We're going to press math. And then we're going to go down to log base. Or we can arrow up, which would get us there faster. When we press math, if we arrow up, we actually get there faster. We press this in your screen, not on your graph. Oh, my goodness. Math, arrow up. And then you just put your numbers in. So if I go negative 12, and then what was beside it? 144. Like, I'm checking it. I'm just plugging it into here to see if I get 2, right? So negative 12, and then over here, 144. It doesn't work because your base can't be negative. So if I go math and I arrow up and I go 12 and then I go 144, oops, I get 2, which matches. Okay? If you have the older calculators, don't worry about it. I'll show you how to do it in a little bit. Yeah. The B has to be positive, but we still have to show the plus or minus because that's proper algebra. So what they're going to look for is they're going to look for B equals 12 boxed. And then they're going to get B equals negative 12. Circled with a line through it. And what is this one? Extraneous. Okay. That's what we're ending for today.